When we look at the first temptation that Jesus faced in Matthew chapter 4, Matthew's Gospel chapter 4, we read, The devil came to Jesus after he was filled with the Holy Spirit and tempted him. Remember, this is the shrewdest and cleverest of all created beings tempting the Son of God. He knows exactly how to tempt. He's not going to tempt him with crude things like bringing a pretty girl in front of him. Rubbish. He knew that that wouldn't even be a temptation for Jesus. He finished with all that when he was a young teenager. No, 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 no. That's all for people. He knows the, who to test people with such stuff. With Jesus, it had to be something very subtle and tricky where to the ordinary person wouldn't be able to detect it. And here's the proof of it. What do you think is the first temptation? I mean, if you were to ask 99.99% .99 of believers, what was the first temptation that Jesus faced? They would say, well, he was hungry and he was tempted to turn stones into bread. On the face of it, that's it. But what lies underneath it? And that's what we have got to see in the devil's temptations. There's something underneath it. When the devil told Eve, you know, this tree, well, God is, doesn't want you to have it because you might be like him. He was trying to put into God, underneath it was to put into Eve's mind a seed of doubt about God being jealous that they might be like him. God not being a good God, not being a loving God, not being one full of love. And that's a seed he tries to put into our minds so that we sin. So here also to Jesus, the temptation was this. Let me explain to you. And the devil says like this, well, 40 days ago you were anointed, right? You never experienced anything like this before, 30 years, you couldn't do anything like this. Now, you've been anointed with all the gifts of the Spirit. You have supernatural power, which God your Father has given you. He's pleased with you. Use that supernatural power for some benefit for yourself. That's the temptation. Use what God has given you for some benefit for yourself. You're hungry, right? What do you need right now? Bread. Use what God has given you for some gain for yourself. Have you seen that in this temptation? <clears throat> Jesus said, no. Man will not live by bread or by making gain for himself. No. Man cannot live like that. But by every word that proceeds from God's mouth, when God tells me to do something, I'll do it. If he gives me power, if he gives me money, he gives me ability, I cannot use it for myself. I have to use it for others. Did he use it when other people were in need? Sure. You remember once he took five loaves and fed 5,000 men and many women and children with that? He would use it for others, but never for himself. That's the mark of one who follows Jesus. That the power God gives him, he doesn't use for himself. He uses it to bless others. And he will never use it to make any gain for himself. That is the first temptation at which most preachers in the world have fallen. You know, God gives somebody a genuine gift of preaching, anointed ministry, and hundreds and thousands of people around the world want to listen to him. Because he's got such an anointed ministry and people's souls are being fed. They are being strengthened. They are being edified. And some of them are rich people. And they say, we've got to bless this man who has given us such spiritual blessing. The Bible says those who blessed you spiritually must be blessed materially. So they take out their wallets, they take out their checkbooks and write checks in the name of this man and suddenly this man discovers that he can become rich through Christianity. He can get a lot of personal benefit by using the gift God gave him. He didn't produce it himself. God gave it to him just like Jesus had the power to turn stones into bread. Here is a man who's got power to move people by God's word, anointed by God without a doubt. But to use that to get some personal benefit for himself and most preachers, 99% of them, have fallen. They don't even realize they've fallen. 
See, the great mark of a deceiver is he'll give you a counterfeit note, and if you can walk away thinking you've got a real one, <laughs> then he's a real deceiver. And that's the great thing about the devil. He makes a man fall, and the guy doesn't even know he's fallen. And the devil and the demons sit back and laugh. You couldn't fool Jesus. And you can't fool a man whose mind is rooted in the scriptures. You couldn't fool Paul. Paul knew that personal gain and profit and money are a great snare and that you are not supposed to make money for yourself in the name of Christianity or in the name of the gospel. You know, we were discussing yesterday, some of us, about <clears throat> uh, a very good brother who wrote a book which sold millions of copies and all of a sudden he suddenly became a multi-millionaire Christian book and so what did he do he did a very good thing which most people may not do and that is from the millions he made through selling this Christian book he paid back to his church of which he had been a pastor for 24 years all the salary he received from the church for 24 years and he decided not to increase his standard of living. That was great. But think of many brothers I know in our churches who have never received a salary from the church for 24 years or 30 years. And who have never received one rupee for the books they wrote. Who never made millions, never made one rupee. We admire a man who's given something away from millions he has made from other Christians. Did Paul make money out of the epistles he wrote? Are we supposed to make money out of Christian books that we write? Are we supposed to make money for ourselves through Christian CDs that we produce or DVDs? Or if you're a musician, Christian musicians make music CDs and make money for it? Make money out of it? This is the first temptation. God's given you an ability to sing. There are millions around the world who want to buy your CD, make money out of it and become a millionaire. Jesus said, no, I won't use the power God has given me to make any gain. Godliness will not be a means of gain for me. Not only of money. What about honor? It need not be money. It can be that I look for honor. A man can sing. He say, I don't want any money for my preaching, but or singing, but I want honor. I want people to appreciate. And I get honor for myself. That's gain. Isn't honor gain? Some people don't want money because they've already got plenty of it. But they want honor. And that's why so many preachers come to India from Western countries. In their own country, maybe only 100 people will listen to them. But here you go to the villages, you can get 10,000 in no, no uh, time at all. Just appoint an agent and give him a few thousand rupees, which is very little in dollars. And he'll gather 10,000 people without a problem. He'll get buses and bring them all to the site and put up tents. And you get your video cameras and zoom in and tell them all, raise their hands and take all pictures of all that and publish in your magazine back home. And you make money and you fool everybody that you're a great, mighty man of God who's 10,000 people come to listen to you. We who live here know the whole secret. The whole thing's a big deception. But they fool all those people out there because they have never seen such crowds there. Everybody's happy. That, that guy, his, the man is happy because he makes his money. The agent here is happy because he makes his money. And the people there who give money for, to this man are also happy because they think they're giving something to God. And the devil's happy too because he knows nothing's happening. <laughs> Only the angels and God are sad. I'm sad too. I hope you are. <laughs> and what's happening because the name of my Jesus is dishonored. Think if your husband's name was being dishonored by people. Would you feel happy? Do you feel sad when the name of Jesus is dishonored by all these things? I hope you are. He's my husband. He's my bridegroom. And his name is being dishonored all over by these people. And that's what makes me sad. And that's what makes me expose them 